YouTubers, it's Megan here, and today with Creativity with Megan, we are going to do some window color art for Halloween. So, I have all of my things ready. Let me just flip the screen around. There we go. Alright, so I have everything prepared. The angle is perfect. You can't you can't really see me, but I'm right here. So we are going to start. First off, you'll need something like this. It's it's a ice scraper for your car, but it works just fine for this. So we'll put that to the side. We don't need it in this video. I have some colors. This is a funny color from Fiola. If you can see that. There we go. And these are just some extra colors. Won't be needing them today, I don't think. This is our plastic paper kind of thing that you will put your paint onto it. This is paint. It's, it's window art, but it's kind of like a glowy paint kind of thing. So we have that. This is our box of other colors. Let's open that up nicely. And here we have some type of stencils, but I've drawn my own and I do really like them a lot better than what you see in here. So we're just going to be using those. Here we have yellow, peach, red, green, blue, white, and black. And this stuff here, this little needle, this is for very precise things, but I don't think we'll be needing that, so that's that. And last but not least, we have our, well, stencils. So if you can see here, I drew these like last year, so I did like them a lot, so I'm going to reuse them. We have a haunted house here, and a spider, I mean you can see these already, but I'm just going to show you anyway, and this bat. We also have this one's in pencil so it's kind of hard to see, but down here we have a witch's hat and a witch's broom, a cat, a skull face, a pumpkin, and a pumpkin with a face. We also have this big ghost, and in pencil down here, we have some vampire teeth or just a mouth. You can see that. We also have lots to choose from, basically. We have this Frankenstein, and this Frankenstein is huge. This, this Frankenstein is just humongous. It's just his head. I thought it was really cute. I drew it myself too, so I just looked at the pictures online and this is already Christmas. So we're going to stick with the Halloween since it's, today is the, what day is it today? Today is October 25th, so six days till Christmas, till Christmas, six days till Halloween, so I want to start putting up my Halloween decorations. So I think... What do you want to start with? Uh, let's start with... Oh, good choice. Let's start with that. So we have our haunted house here. We have our little plastic thing. And make sure it's sort of clean. You can also use any type of folder foil if you have that kind of thing. But uh, we're just going to put it on like that and... Hopefully it won't move. You can tape it down, but I think I'm I'm okay with doing this without having it taped down. It's really difficult to get the tape off once you do have it taped down, so I'd just rather not. And what you'll also need is a steady hand, so if you have that, you should be good. So... What type of color can we use? I'm looking at this set right here, looking for some colors. I think we will take out the yellow for the lights. And some black. And also, so it's not always just black, we're going to use purple like I had done last year. So, 
they have that going, and I hope this will... There, okay. Just kind of pulling the paper closer to me. Alright, so we have our haunted house. We have our colors. First off, we are going to outline where I colored it here, just the, the black outline. If you can see this, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more, so hold on. There. Alright, that's a little bit better. At least I hope so. It's better for me, at least. So, we have our haunted house. We have our black window universal paint. And now we're just gonna take the cap off and just trace. So if you're good at tracing, this would be perfect for you. So here we go. Bear with me now. So, and if you see that first part, it does go on really nice, just really nice, just, if you see that, this is my traced line, and I'm just going to kind of put it back where I found it, there. So, if you do accidentally move your plastic out of the way, you just sort of put it back and you should be fine. One tip that I will give though is pick a side to work on. Don't start from the bottom. Start preferably from the top. I mean, if you can see me, I'm right here. So this to me is the bottom and this to me is the top. So I'm sort of doing it this way because if, if you do from the bottom and you're working up here, it's going to get all messy and smeared and it's just, it's not pretty. <laughs> It's easy to fix, granted, but it's just, it's, it's not too pretty. So, and once you get the hang of it, you, you don't have to stop every corner or every time the line changes direction. You can just smoothly go around. And sometimes it does get wobbly, you can't really see it from there, but... My line is a is a little bit squiggly, so but that's okay. And if you put the nozzle to the plastic paper, it's a lot easier to get things done. It just it goes so smooth. So, and if you see this right here, probably not, but I sort of, oh, not me, but these bottles do tend to blow out a little bit of air. So, sometimes they do sort of explode on your masterpiece, but like I said before, it's easy to wipe it off. You can use your finger. This stuff is easy to wash off your fingers too, or in case of emergencies, you can just use a paper towel or a tissue or anything. So, we're almost done with the haunted house. So, there's that. We have our outlined haunted house. I'll show you. So you can see it properly. There, do you see that? It's just as easy as that. So, as you see, it's 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 kind of a funky shape of a house, but that's just the picture I found. So, but it's fine. It does the job. It's really it's really nice. So now we are going to also still use the black and outline the windows. 
you know, these, these yellow blocks that you see. <laughs> and I do have to remind you that, unfortunately, this stuff dries in about a day and give, give or take a couple hours after that. So it won't make it to the end of this video, I'm sorry, but you'll just have to see the finished product on my other videos when they're done. So I'll show you what they look like and, and maybe I'll put them on the on the glass window for you to see. If you're interested, that is. So there, right there, I just outlined one of the doors or windows. And I'm just going to do that with every single one. So I'm going to do this rhombus looking one up here. And these two small ones. This rounded one over here. And the best part about this window art paint is that anybody can use it. It's perfectly fine to have a small child do it. I mean, obviously, with parental supervision, it's perfectly fine. It's easy to squeeze the bottle. You just have to squeeze a little bit. It might be hard at the beginning, but it should be fun to all those involved. So as I see here, I sort of messed up with my tracing with the windows, but it still works, but I'm just gonna put it back to where I traced the house. So that's a little better. I like things in proportion. <laughs> there wasn't too much of a bad trace. Alright, so now my black outline is completely traced. Might be a little off proportion from the picture, but uh, there we go. And now I'm just going to color in, for now, the yellow windows. So here I have my yellow, yellow paint. And in case you're wondering, this is acrylic sort of... Um, it's, it's a glass color paint, so, and also, when you put it on the window, it's not permanent. You can take it off, and it peels off wonderfully. Unless, of course, they're outside in the cold, like I had them last year around Halloween. Unfortunately, they do break if they get cold enough, so if you want to keep them for a while, they do wrap up nicely. We place them in on, on a piece of paper and just kind of kept them like that, so they're still fine. They they are reusable, let's call it that. So, and if you notice, hopefully you can see it from up there, but uh, when I'm squeezing the yellow paint into the picture, it just smooths in into the into the outline so I'm just gonna zoom you in a little bit more there that's a little better all right so just the yellow paint just goes in so nicely in between the black lines like that I don't even have to touch it to the paper it, to, to the plastic it just goes on by itself. Really nice. And you can kind of move it around the this paint, like what I'm doing here, just kind of get it in, into the corners. It will mix the color a little bit, but it's not too tragic. So we are almost done. Windows, door, done. And this is what it looks like. 
the only thing about this, about this wall paint, this, uh, not wall paint, this glass paint, is that if you have spaces that aren't connected, you have to fill it in. So, unfortunately, unfortunately, we're going to fill it in, though, with some purple. How unprofessional. <laughs> Alright, so, again, like earlier, the yellow, how, how it happened to the yellow, the purple is doing the same thing. So, if you just squeeze a little bit, it will find its spot in between the lines and just seep in. <laughs> The one thing about this though is that the color looks sort of pale or opaque, sort of. Sort of like a color that you would see during Easter. But when this stuff is dry, it is so much brighter and so much more clear that it's just amazing what these colors do. So if you think that the color that you're using, you're like, oh man, I wanted it to be darker. Or, oh, it's, it's just, oh, it's not the color that I want. Don't worry, when it's dry, it will change color like magic. So in bigger spots, you can just sort of just go around in circles and just fill it in quicker. Really easy to do. And this doesn't really require a whole bunch of paint either. It only looks like it. So, just in case you're worried, oh, it's too much paint and I don't want to use that much and it'll run out quicker. It doesn't. It, it depends on how much you do, obviously, of course. But, uh, it really isn't that much. And even if it is to you, when it's dry, the result is just amazing. We're so close to being done. So, so close. And sometimes, if you just heard me tap on there, sometimes, like I said, this stuff creates bubbles in your paint. And the easiest way to get rid of these bubbles is just to sort of tap on your color. And it, it will pop right out. So there we go, that is our almost finished result. That is the result of our paint. So here's what it looks like off of the traced. And you see it has the color and the window and this door I might fix and I think I'll do that just right now. So really easy to fix. The yellow paint sort of went a little bit too, too much over the black or the purple over the black, it, it doesn't really matter, but gently just gently get enough paint on there try not to make it too far away from the color that you're fixing 
because otherwise you're going to have to put more color on top of it and just fix it that way. And also I'll fix this window here because it's sort of small. There. Touch-ups aren't really necessary, but to me, it's necessary. <laughs> All right, well, here is the almost finished product. If you care to see the finished product and with me scraping it off the plastic, it's rather hard to do. I will post another video in a couple hours, so give me a day or two, and maybe there might be something else involved. Maybe a nice spider or the bat or, hey, even Frankenstein. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Bye!